arguably the worst decade of all time, the unfortunately named noughties came with a matching slew of really bad music. Whilst the UK was in the thralls of post-Britpop with such tosh as Franz Ferdinand, Snow Patrol and Keen, the US had tacked a misspelling of the word new in front of the word metal and in doing so had created the lighter fluid doused weak old tub of Todd that was Papa Roach, Limp Biscuit and Incubus. And with this descent into new metal came a manufacturer's lull in interesting guitars. Even Fender started producing things like the Esquire Scorpion, a matte black, guardless, single humbuckered Telecaster with a Scorpion 12th fret inlay. But rest assured, whilst some slept, others innovated. I don't know if you know, but we're not really a YouTube channel. We're a podcast, the world's number one guitar podcast. So tune in every week for a free hour long episode on Spotify, Apple Music, or any good podcast provider. And with that in mind, this is the Guitar Nerd's top five weirdest guitars of the noughties. Ibanez played a blinder in the noughties when it came to weird signature models. They popularised the seven string guitar with the Korn K7 and they introduced baritone guitars to the shelves of guitar shops with the Mike Mashuk stained signature model. But their weirdest offering of the decade came in the form of a limited edition signature model for offspring guitarist Kevin Noodles Wasserman, the NDM1. Coming in the shape of the Talman, the NDM1 had a very unique finish. It was completely wrapped in duct tape. Because of the tape finish, each guitar was unique in its own way. No two tape wraps were quite the same. Needless to say, the instrument didn't last very long and in 2005, two years after the instrument had started being produced, it was discontinued. Not all noughties brands were done with the post-wood era of guitars that was the late 80s and early 90s. And in the wake of Steinberger and the Parker Fly, Switch Vibracell guitars reared their patented polyurethane resin-based synthetic material guitar head. Switch produced guitars made from a single synthetic mold for both the body and the neck, often with an ebonite fretboard. They produced a large number of body shapes in the short time that they were a business, all made from the same process and with a similar aesthetic. Some even included a Roland GK2A MIDI pickup system, making the guitar completely MIDI compatible. So it is hard to choose an individual instrument from their lineup. But if I was forced to pick one, then the Ultima 4 Signature. A weirdly bloated Telecaster with a bizarre strung through bridge and Belgian flag finish has to take the biscuit. Almost two decades too late to be cool, the Minerick Inferno characterises everything about leather trousers, wearing sunglasses indoors and tasteless solos. A flaming Les Paul with horns and a fiery tail, the Minerick Inferno isn't just a looker. According to Mr Minerick, the inventor of the BC rich warlock goddess, the Minerick Inferno is the most scientifically advanced guitar to be built to date. Featuring custom tone chambering throughout the entire body, even into the flame tongues, increased mass on the left side of the body accents low frequencies and reduced mass on the right side increases the voice-like high frequencies. Each fiery tongue on the Minerick Inferno is apparently designed to create a certain frequency response, making the Minerick Inferno the most tonally broad guitar in the world. Few guitars in these lists have actually made me or Mark throw up in our mouths, but this one absolutely had me swallowing chunks. The ESP LTD Devil Girl. Produced in 2003, fortunately to a quantity of only 100, the ESP Devil Girl is a tasteless, unplayable collector's piece. Complete with a single passive EMG humbucker in the bridge and devil tail inlays, the Devil Girl guitar was LTD, the affordable arm of ESP, taking a stab at the ESP custom shop. 
The ESP Custom Shop consistently produces some of the maddest, most exotic looking guitars you will ever see, all to a level of detail unmatched by any of the competition. From giant angel lady guitars to actual sword guitars. But despite the LTD devil girl not coming close to the level of detail executed by ESP, that hasn't affected its second-hand retail value. With these ugly, tasteless monstrosities coming in at over 2,000 US dollars. <laughs> Now, number one on this list has made its way from being extremely niche and weird to being a relatively conventional, accepted, and pretty respected guitar today. In fact, to mention this instrument now doesn't seem weird at all, but in 2002, when the first Line 6 Variax hit the shelves in guitar shops, it was utter madness. An instrument that could be over 20 other instruments at the flick of a switch. Even the idea of loading an effect into a guitar was niche at the time. And here were Line 6 with four instruments at four separate price points that could be any instrument you wanted in any tuning that you wanted. The budget 300 model, the original 500 model, the 600 that came with a whammy bar, and the carved top 700 series. The guitars doubled in bizarreness as they had no visible pickup. Each string had its own piezo pickup beneath the saddles that converted the string signal into a digital signal and then replicated the desired guitar model. And as the plucking of strings only served to send the signal, the Variax was capable of all alternative tunings as well. For 2002, that must have been absolute madness. So there you have it, the Guitar Nerd's top five weirdest guitars of the noughties. But what did you think? What did we miss? Let us know in the comments below. And if you've liked this video, then give us a like and subscribe to Guitar Nerds, and we'll be back with more guitar nerdery next week. Farewell.